Dr. Jennifer McAdam and I'm a professor of chemistry here at Santa Ana College and today we are going to do a demonstration of a titration experiment. Now this is an experiment that we do in our Chem 219 class, um, General Chemistry, and how this works is we have this instrument here is called a burette and what I've done is I've put sodium hydroxide, which is a base, and I filled this burette up here to the top. In here, I put hydrochloric acid, which is an acid, obviously. And what I'm gonna add to this acid is an indicator. This indicator is called phenolphthalein. So I'm just gonna put two drops of this indicator in here. And you can see nothing happened, right? It's still colorless, meaning there's no color here. Now, what I'm gonna do in a titration is I am going to add this base to the acid. And the indicator is colorless when it's a low pH or an acidic pH, which again is below seven on our pH scale. When the pH becomes neutral, this indicator will turn pink, right? So in a basic solution, it would be pink. So right now I have a base, sodium hydroxide, which is colorless. And I have my acid and my indicator, which are colorless. When I add the same amount of the same moles of my base as my acid, this is going to turn pink. And that indicates that now I have a pH neutral solution, which means a pH of seven. And again, we do this one in our 219 lab, our Chem 219 lab, and you get really, really good at this in Chem 219. So right now it's closed. When I open it, you can see I'm going to add my base to my acid and it doesn't really look like anything's happening. But if you look closely, it'll be turning pink very, very soon. And the pink right now is kind of going away and it's sort of there and it's sticking around a little bit longer. But when I stop it and I mix it, the pink goes away. The reason the pink is there is because the base and the acid are in one specific area creating it to be pink, but when I mix it, it gets distributed. Now, when the whole entire flask stays pink, that means we are now pH neutral. So we're gonna come down here, keep adding a little bit more. And the longer it stays pink, the closer I know it is to what we call the end point. And again, the end point is when the acid equals the base. So the moles of the acid equal the moles of the base. And so now I've made it go drop by drop a little bit slower because I know I'm getting close to that point where I'm going to be at a pH neutral and I don't want to go past my end point. I just want to go to my end point. So if I make this go a little bit slower now, and we go drop by drop, and we mix it, we should be getting close to our endpoint. And this is the part that's really fun, and when you're in lab, super frustrating, because you're like, when's it gonna change? When's it gonna change? Because one drop will make it go from baby pink to fuchsia, and fuchsia means you've gone too far. We want to go just to our end point. So it's getting very close now. And there we are. And now it's pink. And it stayed for about 20 seconds. We can stay for a little bit longer. And there we go at our end point. And so now we know that that is our end point. Again, what does that mean? That means the amount of our acid equals the amount of our base. So what we can do is we can use the amount of base we added here. We know the amount of acid we have, and therefore we can figure out what the molarity or the concentration is of our base or our acid, whichever one is the unknown. And it goes away after about 30 seconds which you can see, that's kind of the color. And if you add too much, this is what happens. It turns really bright, bright pink, and we call this fuchsia, 
and that means we've done a horrible titration, right? So we always want a really, really light titration like you just saw, a light pink. When we go too far, we make this color. And if you take Chem 219 with us, the first time you do a titration, you'll probably end up making this color, but by the third time you do a titration, it will be a magnificent color of this baby, baby pink. So that is our um, demonstration of a titration, and um, we hope to see you all in our new building. So our chemistry department is located on the third floor of the Science Center, along with the physics. The second floor is biology, and our first floor has our main offices, um, the geology labs, and the learning center. And a great thing about the learning center is it is a place where students can come and get tutoring from the professors in the physical sciences and the life sciences Monday through Thursday, pretty much any time. And so you're welcome to come into the Learning Center. It's right when you walk in the door of the Science Center and you can get help on whatever sciences you need anytime.